The only thing that we're interested in is putting money in your wallet. So if you want to bet the fights, if you want to have a little bit of action, you are in the right place with my partner, Ian Parker. I am Bretto Komodo. We're ready to rock between our parlays, our props, our straight picks. It's time to make money. Let's go. After a very rare week off, the UFC is back at the UFC Apex this week with a UFC Fight Night main event between Kai Kata France and Amir Albazi. That's taking place at 125 pounds and it's taking place right inside that building that you're looking at. And we are here to talk about the card, everything from a gambling perspective. Hello everybody and welcome back. We hope you missed us. It is uh, Brett Okamoto as always with my friend. Ian Parker, who I'm sure has just been dying over the last 14 days because he had a good event at UFC Fight Night two weeks ago, and the man hasn't been able to brag about it, and nobody likes to brag as much as Ian Parker. So please, Ian, without further ado, the floor is yours. Talk about how you did at UFC Fight Night a couple weeks ago. Thank you, Brett. Love you, too. For the recap, we went 4-2, and two, as you mentioned. The two losses were two underdogs, so we didn't have to pay the juice there. You know, Michael Johnson got Michael Johnson, meaning he was looking great, and then all of a sudden, one overhand right, and he was sent to the Shadow Realm. That loss, that bet otherwise, 5-1. and one. We hit our three-leg parlay, I believe, for the third week in a row. Now, the long shot here, we didn't hit the long shot per se. But we hit the first three legs right out of the gate. If you follow me on Twitter, I went on there, I posted on there, I said, hey guys, we hit the first three legs. For the love of God, please go and hedge this because if you do it correctly, you follow what Brett and I have been preaching and educating for the last couple years, you would have profited win or lose. So long shot for me, that was a win. We profited. Obviously, we didn't hit all four legs. But otherwise, a very successful week. We had a week off and now we're back. We're ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. It's really nice to uh, to have some of those big kind of blow up weeks, you know, hitting the parlay again, going, uh, going, doing well on the best bets. And then, yes, always be paying attention to that long shot parlay, because if you get to the final leg, yeah, it's good to have guaranteed money. Any chance you can get guaranteed money, sign me up. I want to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and hedge um, appropriately on that last leg. So let's get to uh, let's get to the car this weekend. You can find it on uh, ESPN plus and ESPN. It it's, uh, starts at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. As I mentioned earlier, you got a very, very competitive flyweight fight between Kai Kata France and Amir Albazi in the co-main event. You have a featherweight bout between Alex Caceres, who's got that number next to his name, number 15. He's been doing this for a very long time. He is a favorite against Daniel Pineda. Jim Miller, I mean, watching this guy every week, it feels like. He's fighting Jared Gordon, Tim Elliott, and Victor Altamirano. Um, six fights. Six fights on this main card. Plenty to talk about here from a gambling perspective. And we will start with that flyweight main event. Kai Kata France trying to come back in his first appearance since losing to Brandon Moreno with the championship on the line last July. We know that the guy is very, very, very good. Amir Abazi. Uh, he also looks very, very good, Ian. This is a step up in competition, if you ask me. He's got three finishes, a 4-0 record in the UFC, but Carter France is the more proven. I'm a little surprised that Carter France is not favored here just because of the track record, but of course, I see the potential in Albazi. How did you feel about this line when you first saw it? Um, Kai Car France maybe should have been a slight favorite here. I think this is going to come down to where we're looking at styles make fights, right? Albazi's going to have just a tremendous advantage if this fight hits the floor. He's an elite grappler, and his striking ain't too shabby. He's got great pressure, good clinch, and all that is a recipe for disaster for someone Kai Car France who thrives off the distance striking, throwing combinations, not having to necessarily worry about takedowns as much. You know, in his last fight, we can talk about the one against Brandon Moreno because to me, Kai Car France, it almost looked like he was embedding the confidence of Alexander Volkanovski and Israel Adesanya, you know. But against a guy like Albazi here, this is someone who has jumped onto the scene and has done everything that we thought he was going to do as a blue chip prospect. He's got in there, he's made quick work, he's really gone to his strengths. And his striking gets better. He's a very dangerous fighter. I am curious how the cardio holds up over five rounds. He puts on a very tough, tough pace, which is something that Kai Car France probably has somewhat seen before. But this is someone who I think is a legit threat, a legit prospect in the division. And I think due to probably uh, not wanting to recycle the same top contenders, you're throwing in a guy, Galbazi, who's number seven, going up the ranks pretty quick. And stylistically, I think out of every guy up front ahead of him, this one makes the most sense for Albazi to go and attack to try to get that much closer to a title shot this early in his career. 
Yeah, no, I do like the matchmaking here. I think from a, from a standpoint of just creating some storylines at this 125 pound division where we saw, you know, Figueredo and uh, and Moreno go at it four times in a row, that uh, it's it's nice. It's nice to be creating these new storylines. And Albazi has been. Um, exciting. You know, the guy has a lot of power. The guy has finishing ability on the submission. So when you look at uh, maybe some methods of victory or potentially the over-under, how are you actually going to be betting this main event, the first uh, main event uh, appearance for Amir Abazi with those five rounds? You know what? I'm, I'm going to take Amir Abazi here. I like the line. I like the minus 110. If you do want to take him to win by finish at plus 180, you know, for me, if he gets this done inside the distance, it's going to be by submission. I think he'll go and take the back of Kai Car France in a scramble, get under the neck and go for the rear naked choke and get it done there. I, I think his pressure is going to be too much. You know, for Kai Car France in that fight against Moreno, he got ta he got touched up and then he had an ill-advised single leg that didn't work out and then he took that body shot. If you do anything ill-advised in the grappling world against someone like Albazi, you're going to sleep. Kai Car France will be the better striker here. There is just something about Albazi. I think the grappling, the clinch work is going to be too much. We're going to take him at those odds. Interesting, man. It's going to be a very, very interesting stylistic fight because I agree with everything you say. I, I believe that both of these guys will have success, and that's reflected in the very, very competitive minus 110 line on both these guys. But Kai Kara France, it could be one of those fights where Kai is looking great and then Amir Abazi just catches him with something or is able to put the fight where he wants it because he has that finishing ability. Very, very intriguing fight at 125 pounds. We do have a co-main event to talk about, but before we do, we will get to the man, the Iron Man, Jim Miller, who is just... Uh, He's turning the UFC record book into a one-man show here. I mean, when you look at what Jim Miller has done, and he's done it with so much class, 41 fights in the UFC. That's the most in UFC history. 24 wins, that is also the most in UFC history. 16 finishes. He is coming off of a loss to Alexander Hernandez in his most recent fight. I believe that we were on Hernandez on that bout, Ian. And prior to that, he had won three in a row, including a win over Cowboy, which I believe we were on Miller. Um, in that fight against Cowboys. So you have had a little bit of a, a gauge here on Jim Miller. He's taking on Jared Gordon here as an underdog. What are we doing here with Jim Miller um, here against Jared Gordon? This is such a bizarre fight for me because to your point, it feels like we talk about Jim Miller at least once every three weeks. And for Jared Gordon, he just fought Bobby Green uh, up until the headbutt. He looked great. For Jim Miller, you know, against Alexander Hernandez, I think the age was showing a little bit. And I think in this fight, you know, as long as Jared Gordon is healthy, he mentioned he had a minor concussion, which if that was the case, the doctors would have been at his door this morning, not let him fight way too quick. But he still had a six weeks to, to train for this. I think Jared Gordon has been looking great, you know, against Patty Pimblett. We all agree he should have won that fight. He was beating Bobby Green in the stand-up. It looks great. I think Jared Gordon, as long as he's healthy, gets this done. You know, and the scramble's on the ground, he should be fine. I'm going to go with Jared Gordon here. If that number goes any higher, go with the fight to go the distance. All right, so we're taking Jared Gordon up to minus 190. Let's go through the rest of this main card. We'll start with the co-main event. It's at 145 pounds. Alex Caceres taking on Daniel Pineda. Caceres, one of those guys, man, he has cashed as an underdog a lot in his career. Pineda, a little bit up and down, kind of inactive over the last couple of years. What are we doing with this one? You know, Bruce Leroy is a fun fighter to watch. He's actually become very good everywhere. As you can see, the chokes, the unpredictable kicks. He's fighting someone in Pineda, though, who's very experienced, and somehow, when he's the big underdog, he comes through and he wins. I think this fight, although Pineda seems to be a kill-or-be-kill type of guy, goes over one and a half rounds. I think the first round's going to be a big measuring stick. I think Pineda's going to look to put Caceres on his back. I think over one and a half rounds here, if a finish happens, look for that to happen early in the third round. All right, and from there we go back to the flyweight division. It is Tim Elliott taking on Victor Altamarino. Tim Elliott, I don't know, you're starting to call this guy a gatekeeper a little bit? I mean, he has some losses in the division, but they are to very, very top competition. Altamarino coming off that contender series. He is 32. What do we think of this one? You know, look, Altamarino is a fun fighter to watch. He's very exciting, a little bit hectic here, likes to put the fight on the floor. But Tim Elliott's a veteran. His last fight, we saw him go against a very strong grappler with good striking, and he was able to get the decision win. A lot of crazy stuff going on in his personal life. But when we saw him to Kenzie Dern, that can be used as motivation. I'm going with Tim Elliott here. I think he gets the win over the newcomer. And then the ladies, uh, Kareen Silva taking on Ketlin Souza. What do you make of this matchup, and ultimately, what's your pick? You know what? Kareen Silva should win this fight handedly. I don't like to go over minus 200, minus 225. We're going to throw her in the parlay later, and I got some other stuff up my sleeve, but we're going to use Kareen Silva, and she should get this done. 
against the Invicta fighter in Ketlin Souza. All right, and that brings us Brett, to the Parker's prop bet of the week. <laughs> Where are we going with this one? You got you beat me to the punch there. I got too excited. With Karini Silva, I think she gets this done by submission. Her last two wins in the UFC have been both by sub. Caitlin Souza is more of a striker. Not great once put on her back. I think Karini Silva is a legitimate prospect. Watch her grow in the UFC. She's going to be someone to keep an eye on by submission. We're going to get that at plus odds. Let's go. All right, and then the final fight we're going to talk about here in detail. Abubakar Nurmagomedov taking on Dos Santos. This could be a very, very interesting stylistic matchup fight. What do you think of the odds, and what is your pick for this one? You know, the odds have been going back and forth. Minus 115 this way, minus 110, minus 110. And for me, I would lean Dos Santos here. I think he's got more ways to win. However, both these guys seem to be decision machines. I'm going for this fight to go the distance. I think it's going to primarily stand on the feet for all three rounds. And therefore, we don't have to flip a coin. All three rounds, let's go bell to bell. Yep, I like that. I like that. Uh, I like that pick. I think that's going to be a very competitive fight to watch. Okay, so that takes us through our main card. So let's hit the prelims real quick. Um, some strong prelims that you can find on ESPN Plus. What do you got for the prelim picks this week, Ian? Love Daniel Santos coming off that big win over Castaneda. I think he takes on. He's gonna. I think he beats Johnny Munoz. Brett, brace yourself here. Whenever Dante Mays is on one of our betting cards, I've learned my lesson. I'm staying away over two and a half rounds between him and Andre Arlovsky. If he can't knock Arlovsky out, Arlovsky probably wins his by a very boring decision. I'm going with the underdog here in Gafarov. I think what we saw in Castaneda, he comes out very fast. If he doesn't land the shot early, he can gas. And Gafarov's got some nasty striking. He's someone to watch making his UFC debut. Jamie Morlarkey is taking on a, someone on short notice. This fighter is fighting up a weight class, short notice. We just saw Malarkey do this in his last fight. Minus 450 is a lot. Wouldn't obviously do that on the money line. If you need a prop, maybe him to win by decision, but we're going to throw him in the parlay as well. Elise Reed against Jinyu Fry. I'm going Elise Reed here. She's going to be able to keep the volume up the striking. I don't like Fry at her age at 39. I believe 38, 39 coming off a bad knockout loss. We're going to go with Reed. Luan Lacerda, after his fight against Cody Stamen, I was really impressed. I think Blackshear is a talented athlete. I think in regards to this fight, though, Lacerda will just have more ways to win. And last but not least, this is a very bizarre fight to open the card up. Max Grishin, Philip Lins, outside of Lins' last win over OSP, a lot of fights have gone to decision. Grishin is a decision machine as well, over two and a half rounds there. All right, very nice job there on the prelims. Ian, there's a lot of close odds there, so hopefully we can get hot, make some money on the prelims heading into the main card. What are we doing for the parlay here on Saturday? <coughs> we are going to try and keep this streak going. Karini Silva, she's all over our betting board this week. At the money line, we're going to take her. Same thing with Daniel Santos. Arlovsky Mays, I think this fight's going all three rounds, so why not over one and a half? And we're going to go with Jamie Malarkey there. We're going to get plus 227 on this four fight. I like that number. You know, it's, it, of course, a little bit on the chalky side, but getting a little bit more than two to one, I'll take that all day. Hey, I think I said it two weeks ago, man. We got a little bit of momentum with the parlays. Let's get these wins. Let's hit these parlays. They only were, I mean, plus 227 is just fine as long as it's cash in. How about your best bets after going four and two two weeks ago? You know, this one is going to be an interesting card. I, I, unfortunately, I know everyone wants to see knockouts inside the distance. I think that's going to be opposite here. First, let's start with the main event. I'm your Albazi. I think that ground game is going to be too much for Kai Kara France. Nurmagomedov Dos Santos fight to go the distance. Arlovsky Mays. I don't care if Arlovsky is 70 years old. His fights, unless you sub him early, which happened with Delima and Aspinall, he goes the distance. Mays has just been so unimpressive over two and a half rounds there. Gafarov, I'm taking him as the underdog money line there. I am going to go Elise Reed. I have not love taking fights that low in the rankings, but her striking and her top ground game should be enough to get the win. And last but not least, Linz versus Grishin over two and a half rounds. Now, Brett, real quick, Arlovsky and Hit Maze. That fight was minus 190. Ten minutes ago, it's already jumped up to minus 200. If you don't like that number, take it to go the distance. You will get better odds there. All right, so there's a full slate of six best bets, and to wrap it all up, let's hit the long shot parlay, which we somewhat hit last week. Uh, what are we going with at uh, this UFC fight night? Look, hey, you know what? There wasn't a lot for me here long shot-wise. This is a very thin card, a lot of odds close. I'm going to go Pineda, Orlovsky, and Gafarov here, get plus 95. You know, this is something where I think all those fights are winnable. 
I'd like to hit one long shot this year without hedging, but as you saw earlier in our show, follow me on Twitter. I will be reporting the results live, and if the hedge opportunity comes up, I will be there to remind you. Very nice work today, Ian. A lot of names on here that, uh, you know, we don't have a full track record, but I feel like uh, the, the information was there. You come in, come in correct. You had the full two weeks. We, we, it's like you're Andy Reid off the bye, buy, baby. We are ready to go for this UFC fight night on Saturday. You can catch six prelims on ESPN Plus and then switch over to the main card, 9 Eastern on ESPN. And then next week, I will be in Vancouver for UFC 289, and we will be talking about all of that from a gambling perspective as always until then enjoy your weekend and we'll see you next week